Hello fellow watchers. Um, what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about my personal testimony, um, where I have come from, um, what my life was like before, and what it's like now. Um, some of the things I'm going to say may shock some of you. Um, if you're a Christian and you don't believe in what I'm saying or whatever, please don't try to convince me otherwise because I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so first I want you to know that the Lord loves you and He cares about you and He wants you to love one another as He loved His disciples. So, where to begin? Um, let's start uh, back in the 80s. I worked for Shell Oil Company for about nine years and then I uh, was laid off. And uh, I couldn't find a job for about a year. And um, during this time, I searched. I couldn't find one. And I was a Christian during the time that I worked at Shell. This demonstrates a principle of God, that when we become lax in our faith, that it, it requires God to judge us. But then He will restore us once we repent. So what happened was, and this cycle repeats itself over and over again if, if, if you allow it to occur. You know, if you get into sin, God will judge you and He'll cause things to happen. So I lost my job. I didn't have any work because of I let a little bit of sin creep into my life. I quit reading the Word as much as I should. I quit going to church, things like that. And then boom, all of a sudden I lost my job. So I don't have a job. And I'm, I decide after about a year that I've had enough of this and I began to fast and pray. And um, before I worked for Shell, I was uh, I used to do a lot of hunting as a child. And one time while I was hunting, I was shooting these ducks in the river. I used to live on the Tuolumne River near Modesto, California. And uh, I heard a voice tell me to get up and walk down by the river. And so, you know, I was like, what? And I looked around. I didn't see anybody. I was about 15 years old. And... Um, I heard the voice again it said son get up and walk down by the river and so then I stood up and I and the wind was blowing it was springtime in the early afternoon and I was laying in this grass underneath a huge oak tree and then uh, I yelled dad is that you you know for my stepdad and no answer so I started to lay back down the voice said it again it said son walk down by the river and immediately my legs carried me down to the river turned me around and right where I have been laying, giant branch, probably 1,500 to 2,000 pounds, breaks off that oak tree and falls exactly where I had been laying. It put about a two and a half foot hole in the ground where I was laying. So undoubtedly, myself weighing about 115, 120 pounds at the time, I would have been smashed. It would have killed me. It would have killed me or paralyzed me. So I believe that was God's divine hand protecting me. So anyway, I, I, you know, did all these things as a child, you know, and how we do, we fall away from God and we don't listen to Him and all these things. And then finally, you know, I was a Christian again and then I fell, had these little problems at Shell that I let little things in my eyes get me distracted from the Lord. And He judged me and so I was not working, so I decided to fast and pray. And I fasted for 10 days. On the 10th day, at 1 o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke me up and he said, I want you to go across the street and pray for the neighbor, for the workmanship of his hands. And so um, I said, Lord, I'll do it later. You know, it's, it's one o'clock in the morning. And he said, no, I want you to do it now. And I said, I promise I'll do it later. And he said, either you go and pray for the neighbor now, or I will not let you sleep all night. So I said, okay, I got up, got my clothes on, I go out, go to the front door, and it's about 1.15 in the morning, and I look out the people, and I said, Lord, if that's you talking to me, and it's not my brain talking to me, <clears throat> make him turn his front porch light on. Boom, the front porch light comes on. So I walk out into the front yard, stand in the street, and I said, Lord, one more time, if it's really you, make him come out here to me. The front door knob jiggles, and the guy comes out carrying a bag of aluminum cans. He's startled. He says, Gary, what are you doing in the street? And I said, well, um, you're not going to believe this, 
but the Lord told me, woke me up and told me to come over here and pray for you. And I told him I would do it in the morning, but he told me, no, I had to do it now. So here I am. And, I, and uh, he and I had a disagreement about God, whether I could be a Christian or not, because he saw me drinking a can of Foster's beer. And I told him, well, Jesus made you know water into wine. And he said, well, that wasn't real wine. And I said, well, then how did they get drunk? So we just disagreed about that one fact. But anyway, um, so he said, well, you know, good thing. He says, he says, it has to be God because he says, I save these aluminum cans and I recycle them. I crush them up. And he says, my can crusher is in the house and I store the cans in the garage. So I don't, he says, I felt that I had to bring these cans outside and set them next to the garage by the trash cans. And he says, so it has to be God. And he says, I want to apologize to you for saying you couldn't be a Christian. And he said, and the other thing is, I'm leaving for a business that I bought. And um, he says, I'm leaving at 4.30 4 in the morning, so you couldn't pray for me tomorrow. So I prayed for him. And then I went to bed. And then the next day, I was in the bathroom, in the shower, and I was crying out to God. I said, look, God, you know, I fasted for 10 days, and you wake me up and have me go pray for the neighbor. He says, well, I'm going to do something for you also. He says, um... The fire department is going to call you tomorrow and offer you a job, and I want you to take that job. Now, I'd applied for a job with them, with the Bakersfield Fire Department, seven months prior, but the list had expired, and they'd hired everybody because I checked. And so, he says, in three days, they're going to call you, and you take that job. I said, okay. You know, and I said, well, what will happen then? He says, you'll work there for 10 years. And I said, well, then what will happen? He said, you will go back to the oil fields for one year. And then I said something that I don't understand why I said, you know, I've, I've always been a space kind of guy, Star Trek, Star Wars, things like that interest me, but I asked him something that was kind of odd to me to ask God. I mean, I, most people say, well, when's the, the rapture going to occur or, or something else, you know, but uh, I asked him, what about the aliens? And he says, you know, aliens from outer space, and he says, well, that will take care of itself in time. And I said, well, what will happen after I leave the oil fields? And he says, you will do my will. So three days later, the fire department calls me, the chief of the fire department. He says, look, I want you applied for this job. The list is expired, but I got special permission to offer you a job. He said, we'd filled all the positions, but one of the guys quit this last week, and I don't want to go through 100 applicants, go through this whole mess when I already have you and you've already been pre-approved. You just weren't hired. So we'll do a background investigation on you and hire you. Is that okay? And I said, yes, I'll, I'll take the job. So two of the captains that came out and investigated me, they didn't like me. One of them thought I was a little bit too old because I was 33 years old at the time. And the other one said, well, I just don't know why I don't like him. And this guy, turns out, hates Christians. So I go to work there, and uh, I'm working at the fire department. And first thing happens, a homosexual decides he doesn't like me and attacks me because they can tell that the Spirit of God is within you. And I don't want any people that are homosexual to come on my side and attack me. The Bible clearly says that that is a sin. So you guys deal with that however you want to deal with that. You deal with God. It's in His Word. He burnt two towns up over it. Okay? So anyway, uh, the guy begins to attack me, starts little things happening to me. I wasn't really going to church because I had a few bad experiences in church before. Um, I started doing some more, a little bit of sin. One of the Christian guys was there, talked me into smoking cigars, which I thought were wrong. Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't know what you guys feel. If you don't feel it's wrong, that's fine. But I did, and so that convicted me, caused these things to happen to me. And then uh, my sister was messing around with some tarot cards and stuff. And uh, But before this, um, before those things happened to me, we went on a vacation, and we went to, um, the fire department was talking about laying us off after I'd only worked there for about a year. And I had a three-year-old daughter, and when we came back from this vacation in Washington State, Upper Washington State, she told me that the little men from the lights got Daddy and Sarah when we were in the trailer. And I'm like, what? She wouldn't go outside for about a year or so, or almost two years. So anyway, um, finally she got over it. But um, I began to see these little objects in the house floating around and stuff like that. And so I went to a friend of mine, and uh, he had a security company, and he put a hidden camera in my house. It was a $2,000 camera. Put it in my house. It looked like a clock radio. And I got pictures of these creatures, right, and objects in my house. And so um, I uh, went to a, doc to a doctor because I was suffering from stress because this same homosexual guy attacked me and threatened to kill me. 
uh, there was paperwork showing he bought a rifle and all this stuff. He was angry with me for whatever reason. He thought I was keeping him from one of the guys at work. So anyway, he ended up getting fired, but I was suffering from stress. So I went to the doctor. I couldn't sleep, all this stuff. So he suggested hypnosis to try to help me sleep. And I had memories whenever I had this hypnosis. And I remembered seeing these aliens. And the aliens told me that they created God. And they showed me all these things, which caused me to doubt my faith. I still believed there was a creator. But I, I was. they were telling me they manipulated all the things I thought was God, you know, and talked to me and did all this stuff. So I believed them. Satan is a liar. I believe now that they are, are fallen angels. And I can prove that also. So um, for 10 years, I, I, I ended up, my leg got hurt at work, and uh, I ended up being retired and went to the oil fields again, like God, exactly like God said. And I was out there for a year, and during that time, I stopped them for release, from releasing this toxic gas. It could have killed the entire city or a quarter of the city of Santa Maria. I lived near there, and I worked at this oil field company as a fire, as a uh, fire, excuse me, safety manager. So. My name's in the law books because uh, I, they tried to sue me over this and attack me and uh, there was a federal investigation and many of the company top echelon people were um, under federal indictment. So anyway, the guy threatened to kill me and stuff. So uh, that's how I ended up where I live now. But uh, I ran from God for years, right? And, and I still would talk about him and stuff and things like that. And uh, my brother and I were out partying one night, which I used to do a lot. I ride a motorcycle. And my brother talked me into doing this stuff, things that were against my nature. And I was fighting myself, why am I doing this? But I was doing it anyway. And then God spoke to me again about a year ago. And then in, in March or April, he really began to hammer me.